Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, as you probably noticed from the opening uh, fireworks, we've gone over 15,000 subscribers. And that happened on Sunday, February 28, when uh, subscriber number 15,000 clicked the little subscribe button and signed up for videos from the DCC guy. So I'm really excited at the prospects of moving on and heading for 20,000. Today, I wanna go back and uh, resume our discussion of uh, modern railroad operations. This time we'll take a look at car forwarding. So what is car forwarding? Uh, how do you do it? Why do you do it? And a lot of other questions like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I wanna ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Okay, so first let me just uh, give you a couple of definitions. What is car forwarding? Okay, car forwarding is the process of routing freight cars around your model railroad in a manner that replicates the way that the uh, prototype railroads actually did it. And that means, you know, if you have a car that starts at company A that's loaded with something, uh, some merchandise or product that they have, have loaded into the car, then you have to move it to another location somewhere. So one of your locals is gonna pick it up on, uh, on its regular daily run. And then where does that uh, car need to go? Okay, so it's gonna to go to another location, probably industry B, uh, a warehouse or something of that nature, a store, where it, the uh, materials are gonna be unloaded, and then that car is gonna be sitting there empty. And then that car has to be picked up by the local again, and then move somewhere else for loading, and then shipping on to another industry. So how do you come up with all of those different industries and locations and do it in, at least a prototype and realistic manner. Because that's really what this is all about, is again, trying to operate your model railroad just like the prototype did. Now, on the actual railroads today and in the past, um, they typically used a waybill system, a paper system for tracking all of these orders. Now, today, uh, a large part of that is done by computers. What I'm gonna show you today is uh, how to do this that way with car cards and waybills and other forms, that kind of thing that you can try on your model railroad. Uh, also, I will give you a quick overview uh, uh, on computer programs that are available for modelers to also do that. So let's go ahead and take a look then. What I want to start with is the method that's been in use since uh, at least about 1960 and it involves using car cards, similar to this one right here. So the orange thing is the car card, and the white piece of paper is the waybill. Okay, and for every car on your model railroad, you're gonna need a car card, or at least those cards that are in regular operations, because you can use a combination of cars that may be uh, just run-throughs that are always in the same train. They might be uh, uh, coal hoppers that are, are run as a unit train, or any other kind of cars like that. Uh, and you can uh, either not have them as part of your regular operations and just run them through on trains that are through freights, that kind of thing. Or you might also have a few cars that are part of that train that are in, uh, that are in the operating pool and that you need car cards for. The way these are, are, are set up, I use a uh, setup that's available from Micromark. So let's take a look at, at some of this uh, materials that come uh, with the uh, Micromark kit. And there's some other things. There are lots of things that you can purchase individually that I don't have yet, and some that I might never use. So this is just the basic set that I, I have picked out so far. So the first thing is the actual car card itself. And, um, I would do one of these for each car that I have uh, in the operating pool. And you don't need it for every car on your model railroad, just those that are gonna be operated as part of your switching operations on the layout. So if you're doing run-throughs with long uh, coal drags, 
you don't need a, a, an individual car cart for each one. They could just be part of a coal drag or a unit train or whatever. And that same goes for uh, boxcars and everything else that you might be running in a through freight on a regular basis and that are not going to be switched out along the way. Now, of course, you can have a block of cars that could be switched out uh, individually, and that's just something that you could work into your operating practices. But let's look at the individual car carts because these are meant uh, for tracking your cars. So they're this yellow card here, and you can see they have places here for information like the kind of car. So it might be a box car, and that would be XM, and AAR is the American Association of Railroads. And there's a whole list of uh, different uh, abbreviations that are used for different car types. So in addition to the kind, an AAR abbreviation, you have the railroad and its number. So it would be like SR or SOU for Southern, and then the number on the side of the car, and the description. And that could just be like brown, 40 foot, or something of that nature. Just so that the individuals that are, uh, are, are operating that train can easily uh, look at this and get some identifying information about that car. Um, and then down here, it has a space for empty car return to. So it would say Southern Railway. It could be Potomac Yards. It could be Atlanta, Georgia. Any, anything like that uh, major areas where that car might need to be returned to from a, uh, a different railroad. Okay. And then in here, there are instructions because these come in a large pack like this. Uh, and then you can peel those off. So then you would go ahead and fold it up here on this fold line as indicated. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Try to get it in here correctly. And then they have a, an arrow that points right to here to show you where to connect it. And then you have your car card as a packet. And that allow, and if you put pieces of tape, and it tells you that in here, put tape here. And put a piece of tape on each side and fold it over, and that gives you this little pocket that you can insert waybills into and other information. And I'll show you that in just a second. And what I have here is a car card that's already been filled out, and I keep them in these little uh, plastic uh, pockets that uh, you can purchase these as sheets of about 10 to 12. I can't remember off the top of my head, and they're a particular Avery number, and they're made for holding business cards because a lot of people collect business cards uh, of their clients and their customers. And uh, so you can purchase these, and I just cut them out individually, and that provides a protective pocket for your, um, for your car cards. Okay, so you can take it out of there, and then this is one that's already filled out and taped up, so you can see it says here, it's a box car, which the designation, AAR designation is XM. It's Southern 14730, and it's brown. Pretty nondescript brown box car. And then, of course, it's got the uh, pocket all taped up here. And then I can just insert my waybill in here. The waybill is, uh, so this is the car, and this is what's being shipped uh, in that car, and the various bits of information about that. Now, what is a waybill? What I have here is a copy of an original Southern Railway waybill from 1946, November 22nd, 1946. Okay, and it's a Southern Railway document. You can see the Southern seal here and a freight bill. And uh, this says that the consignee or person that you're shipping to is John R. Laws of Columbus, Mississippi. Okay, that's the destination. And it's being routed th uh, uh, via the New Haven, the HR, I'm not sure, if Hudson River or something, the Princey, the Potomac, and through Potomac Yards. Potomac Yards was a major yard uh, just across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. and Alexandria, Virginia. And there was a lot going on there because you had uh, the, uh, I guess, the Pensy and the B&O uh, came into Washington, D.C. and across to interchange freight with the Southern and the C&O. And um, 
uh, probably the RFNP came in there. So there was quite a bit of operations going on there, but I, I digress. Okay, so it goes to the pot yard and then Southern. So Southern was the final railroad that would carry it from Alexandria, Virginia, all the way to Mississippi. Now, it tells you that it originated in West Hanover, Massachusetts um, on uh, November 1st, 1946. And you can see it gives you the National Fireworks Company Incorporated as the uh, shipper. And it's being shipped in a Pensy uh, car, PA 57551. So that's all kinds of information. And this is the kind of stuff that you would build into your uh, waybills. So let me show you a waybill as an example here. And what these uh, waybills are, they're a four position waybill. What that means is that they've got four room in here for four separate shipment uh, sets of shipping information. So you've got waybill one for the first um, uh, des destination or the first location where it starts at, and then waybill and waybill two for the second. You flip it over, and you have three and four. So let me show you how that works. So this is one for the uh, Piedmont Southern. So we start out with freight waybill number one, and um, we are shipping from Glecko Mills, which was a, 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 a mill located uh, south of uh, Charlottesville, Virginia in Arrowhead, and they're sending bagged flour out. And they're shipping it to Quality Foods in Monroe, Virginia. And it's being shipped on the, uh, the routing is through the Southern Railway. Now it could, you could specify Monroe Yard here, but it's not necessary in this case. Okay, so that's the first uh, way bill. Then the second, we are shipping from Quality Foods in Monroe, Virginia, and the lading or the what's being shipped, it's empty. MT stands for an empty car. Another abbreviation. And it's being shipped to Dillard Paper, also in Monroe, Virginia. So basically, right across the parking lot, they're going to move this to their loading dock over there uh, via the Southern Railway. Um, then, flip it over, and you've got freight wheel, way bill number three. Okay, so we're back at Dillard Paper in Monroe, Virginia. They're sending paper products to Dixie Office Supply in Richmond, Virginia. And that's going to be shipped via the Southern Railway first and then via the CNO to Richmond. So it's going to be moved uh, via the Southern to the interchange track with the CNO in Lynchburg and then shipped on to Richmond. And then Freight Waybill 4, uh, Dixie Office Supply in Richmond is shipping an empty car back to the Southern Railway Freight Depot in Monroe, Virginia. So it's going to go back via the CNO and the Southern. So that's the sequence, and you need to, and you would do this for a number, uh, for all of your cars, uh, uh, and, and industries on your model railroad. So it's a lot of waybills that need to produced, be produced, and the way that this works is, during an operating session, this would be, you know, in the pocket. When the Southern Railway local uh, got to Glecko Mills, they would see they needed to pick up this car and then. Move and uh, move it to Quality Foods in Monroe. And then in between operating sessions, the owner would come along, you, and flip that way bill. And that would uh, indicate during the next operating session that that car needs to be picked up at Quality Foods and moved to Dillard Paper. Then after that operating session, you would go to number three in the sequence. And from Dillard Paper, you would uh, it would travel by a, a train to Richmond. Now, we're not going to be able to do that because I don't have Richmond on here, but I do have an interchange yard track down in Lynchburg where this would be sent to, and then it would sit there, and we would imagine basically uh, between sessions that that car had been shipped to Richmond, shipped back, and was sitting there on the interchange track in Lynchburg waiting to be picked up. And then the final way bill has the freight, uh, has the uh, car, the empty car from Dixie being shipped back to the Southern Freight Depot in Monroe. 
via the CNO interchange track. So basically, this move here is something that's just imaginary, and it's just you know keeping track of the paperwork basically that would normally go into the shipment of this car. And it allows you to use your staging yards as destinations off of your layout. Now some other pieces of, of work, of uh, paperwork, uh, in addition to car cards, uh, they have uh, locomotive uh, cards. So you could have, you know, the, the, the uh, road number, the road name, Southern, the type, it might be a, a Jeep 7, whatever, DCC address uh, of that, and then return light to, you know, whatever, uh, uh, Monroe, whatever you want to designate. And you would have one of these for each one of your locomotives. So if you have a three, con uh, three locomotive consist, then you would have three of these packaged together. And that would go at the head of the train. And then you would have all of your um, um, car cards uh, for the local or whatever that's being, uh, the train that it's being shipped in, packaged together with that. I know people that have uh, car cards also for their cabooses. And that might be designated by using a red card or a red mark on it, anything like that, just to give it a hint as to what it is. And then those could be moved uh, with the trains. Now, one complaint that I know a lot of people have about car cards is on some model railroads, uh, you might have very long trains. So you might have 20, 30 uh, car cards in a packet, and that can get pretty thick and pretty heavy fast. And so people don't particularly appreciate that fact of car cards. But on the Piedmont Southern, the way I do it is the only uh, trains that have uh, a lot of car cards or a car card for each car in the train would be the locals and turns because they are making individual deliveries to uh, individual uh, industries and picking up from them. So those would have it uh, on other trains, um, on a fast freight, through freight, something like that. You might have a couple of cars uh, as a single block uh, at the front that could be dropped off in, say, Monroe Yard or Charlottesville, something like that, just to add a little interest to the operating session. But otherwise, they wouldn't have more than that because for a passenger train, you might have it for a couple of express cars that are the head-end traffic. And you would drop those off maybe at Charlottesville or, or Monroe, but nowhere else. So you might only have a couple of car cards uh, in that uh, train, and which makes it more manageable. For each uh, local or, or turn, uh, you would have a pack of cards that would be put together. And then as you move along, you know, you would pick up and set out cars uh, and leave the car cards for those trains in that particular box on your layout. And it would have the industry's name. It might have the town name here. And so for you would have industry A, B, and C. Now, one way that people do this is they have an inbox and an outbox for each industry. Um, that can, you know, get, you can end up with a lot of space being eaten up on your fascias if you do it that way. What a lot of people do now is they just have one box, a compartment for each industry, and then the cars that are being shipped would have their way bills facing out, and then cars that are going to sit there for another cycle, you just have the cards facing backwards. And then when somebody comes into local, then they would put the car cards for the cars they're delivering in backwards like this. And for the ones that need to be picked up, they would be facing forward. And this is something that you as the owner operator would do between sessions, is you would go through and you would look at all of the car cards that are still sitting in here facing backwards. And you would decide, based on the frequency of shipping for that industry, whether or not that car card should be turned around and set up so that the uh, next local that come through would pick it up, or if it should be left to set another unloading cycle. So that's one way of doing it. One thing that you can do to add interest is use what are called switch lists. And switch lists are just these sheets that have information about the car, the car number, the car type, its destination, and any specific remarks that you might want to add. And this would be available for uh, a conductor on a, on a local, for example, to fill out when he got his packet of waybills uh, to be delivered in his train that day. And he would sit down 
and make up this list of those cars in order. And he could, uh, he could actually go ahead and put them down in order of the industries as the train would get to them. So you wouldn't just put them down willy-nilly necessarily, or you could, but since they're going to different towns along the route, you would block them that way. And that's another thing that uh, real railroaders did, and some model railroaders do, is they take the time up front to block their uh, trains according to the uh, order in which they're going to arrive at various industries. And that way it makes it a lot more efficient to cut out a block of cars and switch them instead of trying to cut one from here and one from here and so on within the, the set. So that's one thing you can do is either between operating sessions, you as the um, superintendent of operations can fill out the switch list using the waybills that you have uh, designated for that train. Or the conductor of that train, the operator of that train, can do that at the beginning of the operating session. So you can give, that gives them something to do while they're waiting uh, for their uh, uh, time slot to go ahead and operate their train. Now, if, you're, if you want to use a computer system, and there are a number of different uh, computer uh, programs available for model railroad operations. Uh, there is a, th a program called SwitchList, which I believe is free, that you can download. Just do a search for it with Google and download that and take a look at it. Uh, JMRI in the Panel Pro section has a, a computer program for car routing and forwarding. And then there's a program that's very popular called Ship It that uh, has a lot of options. And one thing that these computer programs can do is they can take all of the information about your cars and industries and yards and trains and everything and generate these switch lists of instructions for each train. So this particular train, uh, it gives you the uh, designations or the destinations along its route and whether or not it's got to pick up or set out cars uh, along the way. So all you have to do as an operator is just follow the map and drop off or pick up the cars as are designated here on the switch list. So this makes it very easy for your operators to do. One thing I like about the car card system, uh, somebody has to do some thinking at some point along the way, just like on the real railroads. But things to be aware of is that it slows operations down a bit because they have to have time to do their thinking and planning and fill out things like their switch list that I've just shown you. Well, that's a wrap with today's video. Uh, I hope that answers more of your questions about model railroad operations. Feel free to hit me with any comments and questions that you might have. Uh, this is a very complex uh, subject, and I really do recommend purchasing one of the book, uh, books that I suggested to you, either Tony Custer's book on realistic model railroad operations uh, available from Kalmbach uh, sometimes, uh, check, your, uh, check the Barnes & Noble bookstore uh, online and you might be able to pick up a digital copy of that. There's also the other special issue of Model Railroader magazine that covers operations as well. I find that to be a very good overview introduction. But again, the Custer book uh, really is probably one of the best uh, laid out. And then if you really want to dig into operations, there's that uh, OPSIG book, the NMRA OPSIG book that you can get either from the OPSIG at their website, opsig.org, or uh, through Streamline Backshop when he has it in stock. So take a look at that one. But um, probably you, the best thing you can do, though, for an introduction to operations is find somebody in your area and uh, go to one of their operating sessions, get, get invited anyway to one of their operating sessions, or a local club. Uh, most uh, clubs are involved to some degree in model railroad operations. So take a look at that as well. And for now, have a good week, and we'll see you here on Friday where we'll do some more kit bashing on the gas works. Bye now.